If you've got a grand or two lying around to spend on a high-end VR headset and PC, great. But given the cables and kludges that are still involved, chances are 2017 is not the year you're going to be shelling out to set up your personal immersion cave. Instead, you're going to be piggybacking on other people's R&D budgets and turning VR into a night out. At places like Salt Lake City's hyper-reality theme park, The Void, visitors can bust ghosts or explore temple ruins that are mapped perfectly to their real-world surroundings. Kings of the big screen IMAX are planning a handful of VR theaters, and even headset maker HTC is planning to put VR in movie theaters, cafes, and arcades all over the globe. Sure, eventually virtual reality is going to sit alongside your home theater setup or maybe even replace it. For now though, the biggest investment you're gonna be making in VR is buying tickets. Drones are here and they promise to change the world. They'll beam the internet everywhere, accelerate warfare, transform televised sports, and of course, hustle your impulse buys to your doorstep. They're already bringing packages to online shoppers in China and carrying blood to hospitals in rural Rwanda. But in the US, the risks of adding drones to already jam-packed airspace, try 30,000 flights a day, have yielded strict rules. No flying beyond the operator's line of sight, at night, or over people. But federal regulators see those rules as a starting point, and they wrote them with an eye toward evolution. If you can prove that bending the rules isn't crazy dangerous, the FAA is game to let you experiment and maybe adjust its regulations based on the results. It's already granted hundreds of waivers. CNN gets to fly over crowds, HBO can film at night, and Google's Project Wing gets to fly 20 drones at once. The FAA is already expected to rethink the no flying over people thing in the next few months, and more rule changes are likely to follow. No, don't expect your Amazon package to plop onto your doorstep just yet. But you should know that while federal regulators are moving cautiously, they're most definitely moving forward. Criminalizing drugs is as American as doing them. But the days of outright prohibition are over, as the prescription opioid crisis has burned through the suburbs and made addiction more relatable. Reframing drug abuse as a public health problem, rather than a criminal one, has prompted reform-minded legislation from both parties. And while America holds prescription medications at arm's length, it embraces recreational drugs. Eight states voted to legalize weed in some form in the last election, bringing the total to 29. And researchers are studying the drug's medicinal applications. Loosening attitudes toward illicit drugs aren't limited to weed. Researchers are also testing psychedelics for treating mental disorders like PTSD. While Donald Trump has pledged to combat the opioid crisis by improving access to treatment and abuse deterrent painkillers, his appointees have also called for stricter marijuana enforcement and drug sentencing. Good luck with that. Such a hardline stance would run counter to state reforms and the $6 billion marijuana industry. For decades now, the car has been tightly linked to the American idea of who you are. It's a declaration of independence, your rolling castle. And it's about to come crumbling down, thanks to five key tech trends that are changing the way Americans move. First things first, yes, self-driving cars are coming. Uber is already running in Pittsburgh, Baidu's in China, Volvo's headed for England and Sweden. It's just the beginning. Second, whether you're driving yourself or not, you will be watched. Insurance companies are using smart dash cams and tracking devices to adjust your rates. And with electric cars making gas taxes obsolete, states are trying out mileage-based taxation. Next on the list, you'll get a power-up, and not just from the increasingly impressive electrics coming to market. Facing regulatory pressure, automakers are working to squeeze more power out of less gasoline. Just look at Nissan's insane and insanely complex variable compression engine, which brings serious oomph from a two-liter turbo. Oh, and don't expect private transportation to stay that way. Ride-sharing services are starting to partner up with public transit agencies in a bid to fill gaps in transportation networks. Uber is already at work in Summit, New Jersey, and more deals are coming. And finally, robot trucks. 
The safety and economic benefits of turning 18-wheelers over to the computer are easy to see, and the shift is coming soon. Uber's self-driving truck outfit, Auto, has already made the first commercial delivery without a human in the driver's seat, hauling 50,000 Budweiser's across Colorado. So yeah, technology is taking the wheel. Sit back and enjoy the ride. Acts of God are on the rise. Insurers now pay nearly four times as much to policyholders hit by natural disasters than they did in 1980. That's because God has had a major assist from fossil-fueled industrialization. With the Paris Climate Agreement, the world's emitters sought to slash carbon across the public and private sectors. Like the U.S. Clean Power Plan, which targeted coal. And India is betting big on solar. The deal sends a clear signal to companies. Invest in green business models. After Trump was elected, more than 360 companies signed a letter urging him to uphold the agreement. Many are hewing to it anyway. Google will reach 100% renewable energy in 2017. And Facebook and Amazon are following suit. Cut the price way Business leaders down. will aim to sway Trump from his anti-green stance down. with economic calculations. Because it's essential for U.S. competitiveness. Oh, also, saving the very planet we call home.